No Mud's Land. A brick wall where most players stop playing Auto Munch's Odyssey. Can we beat it? Find out in this update. You know there's something wrong when the shaman, which is basically the voice of the people that made this game, tells you up front, I don't know how you're gonna do this. People at Auto Inhabitants obviously knew that No Mud's Land is a difficult level. Perhaps for the wrong reasons. Perhaps for annoying reasons. And it's gonna be for reasons that will become apparent as we go along through the level. But it's still fun. I still like it. Just to put a positive air on it. So it's it's divided into three parts pretty much. First half, first, third or so of the level has these pits full of enemies. Uh, there are several ways to clear them out, of course. You know, you could be lame and just possess one of these slicks here. But you can possess something cooler later to get rid of them. Or you could throw powder cakes on them. You know, they don't know you're there. And if they do, what can they do? They'll shoot up at the metal. They can't shoot for the grating, so you're safe up here. Just don't fall. Or they can, I guess, they could shoot at your keg and... Oh, he actually got one. And the keg will explode in your arms and... Well, that won't be any good. That pit to my right, you can't really do anything with them. I don't even think you can possess those, because you got some depossession worms up here. This hole is fun. If it's not obvious why it's fun, well... Yeah. If you can't tell, I really like the explosions in this game, even if they're blatantly set up. I mean, it, it's just really fun explosion graphics. These guys, you too can explode. You know, they just give you powder kegs right here. But, you know, the angle is a bit awkward. And besides, you got this big bro slig armored and gunned up right here. Isn't that nice? This guy can pretty much take out all the security forces in the pits that we haven't killed yet. And he's pretty maneuverable. That's how a big bro looks when he sleeps, by the way. It looks like he lost health rather than gained it, but what do I know? Make sure to shoot these uh, exploding crates. Or those, yes. Or else they'll get in your way and you might have to do some really weird jumping. And it's good to shoot across the river too to get rid of some slick security. One doesn't spawn because of the render distance, and the big bro can't go out that far. But you know, the other two, just you can shoot them easy, or explode them easy. Whichever one fits your taste. This part, you know, this might be a part where like, hey, big bro slig can't go through here, but you can just kind of walk on the edge there and it's no big deal. So you may notice these series of gates. These gates have only one way to go through. These gates are the biggest issue with this level because there are only one way to go through. There's five of them and they take a while to open. They take a while to close too but they close fast enough that you won't be able to have someone go through all the gates at once. Now why is this a problem? Well it's not a problem for Abe because he can walk around the cliff tops. It is a problem for Munch. We need Munch across this, across these gates. And what makes this even worse is the fact that that revival point over there, this one right here, it's the only one in the entire level. So if you, if Munch dies, or if Abe dies, if anyone dies, even near the end of the level, you have to go all the way back and restart this whole tedious process of gates. And trust me, it's a lot more soul-crushing than it sounds. I mean, I, I guess I'm, I, I don't sound that, you know, it doesn't sound that bad. But a lot of people have told me, wow, I really hate this level. This level sucks. This is where I got stuck. This is the wall. 
And it gives people a really negative opinion about this level just because of all these gates. And I don't know what Auto Inhabitants was thinking. Why didn't they put... Oh, well, actually it wouldn't make sense, because if they put a revival point after the gates, then you could just kind of cheese the game. But still, it's just the design is so counterintuitive and boring. Just make sure you don't die. I don't die. Spoilers. You know, I'm too good at this game. <laughs> That's something to be proud of, honestly. Make sure you get all the spoofs, because you need to have 99 spoofs to open up a well for munch. You know, just, just, a, just a side bit, in case you uh, were wondering. Alright, finally. Now, this is no to munch. Never die. Never die. Don't die. That's what I keep repeating to myself in my head when I play this game. Don't die. Please. And 100 spoofs, we are good to go. Nice. I actually picked more than 99 because there is a sleep I mentioned earlier that you have to possess. I only used three, but there's actually more spoofs on the other side of the river, so you don't have to be so conservative with it. You know, I missed a great opportunity to use that in to see if an invisible vendor machine will work with a slig. I think they do, but it's been a while since I've tried. Pretty sure they do. Anyway, we can't do much with the slig, so we're just gonna kill him. And uh, just as a hint to anyone that may have watched a certain video, does this level design look familiar? We'll find out. I'll tell you later after we reach a certain landmark in the level. Be careful when you're going in water as much. If you go in too fast, he'll bounce out of the wheelchair and into a mine. Just like that. And keep Munch here. Make sure he's safe. Just keep him cozy. Keep him happy. We don't want Munch dying. And as we do that, we'll have some fun with Abe. Because... If you may remember a long time ago, I showed you that I can pick up sligs as Abe, Abe can pick up sligs and throw them to places. We could use this mechanic to our advantage, of course. There are a bunch of sligs up here, look at that. And they can't see us, making it very easy to pick them up and throw them on a mine, or at least near a mine. It doesn't matter because there are a bunch of powder kegs that are right at our disposal to chain the explosions. Or you could just make the slugs run into the mines because they're all dumb. If that wasn't apparent. I actually got him on the mine there. Nice. I swear, throwing is a lot harder than it looks. Trust me. You know, not, not much else to say here. It's just really entertaining to watch to throw slugs into mines and stuff. Very simple, very fun. Most people, I don't think most people even do this. This is just my own special way of doing it. And that's why I really like this level. Despite of its somewhat bad level design, there's just so many ways to attack it, you know? You know, that's a bad thing for me to say. And also, I don't know what to do with that slug there. He just kind of runs off after a certain point and runs into a mine. It's fine by me, personally. As long as he doesn't aggravate that big bro slug. There he goes. Actually, I can use him. He has a gun, and that's pretty helpful. We need to pull a lever for Munch. And, well, I don't know. Kill this guy on the way. Armored Slig versus Unarmored. Normally, an unfair fight. With a possessed Slig, you will all with a gun. The possessed Slig with a gun will always win. I think I was trying to do something fancy here. Yep. Get near the barrel. There we go. Only in Oddworld. Only in every other shooting game there is, actually, but that's beside the point. Now is Munch. Do this really quickly, because <laughs> there are some enemies that may see you, and you may not notice, and then Munch will die. And then you have to start the whole level over again, because that's what happened to me the very first time I played it. And that's when I quit playing the game for a couple of months. It's true. I got really lucky there, by the way. Um, if that wheelchair wasn't launched first, I would have been shot face first into that 
uh, mine. Yeah, great, great, well there, odd world inhabitants. Great design. Purposely dicking me over. That's still, I'm still peeved off about that, really. Okay, so. <laughs> I sound annoyed. I'm not annoyed, I love this level. Just, you know, you could see what's wrong here. It's so blatant. And the developers knew it. They just knew it. But with this big bro slug here, he's just, he can just wreck everything. And you may notice here that other big bro slugs, when they're getting shot at by big guns, they are chumps. I mean, they can't, they have no chance of shooting back. An unarmored popper slug has more of a chance to shoot back at you than any big bro can ever hope to. That, that, that's just odd, really. Because they keep stumbling over. When you are possessed, you don't stumble over. It shows favoritism. That guy fell off a ledge. That's, that's gonna ruin his day. Maybe I should just put funny music in here or something. That's what I did last time. Just put some Benny Hill, speed it up completely. But no, no. I would like to take this time to say that um, I enjoy playing this game. And oh, there's a glitchy slug there. I didn't really get to show him off that well with my weird camera. There's a slug that always gets stuck in a fence. I don't know what's wrong with him, but I just possess him and kill him because he's very unpredictable. Lots of glitchy slugs. It's a level goes on, I've noticed. Anyway, LPing this has been a joy. I'm glad you people are watching. Because a bunch of crazy stuff has happened while recording, and while not all of it has been shown on camera, because it's been lost in the depths of corrupted video, it's still been an adventure. That being said, we're still nowhere near done for this game. We still got, like, what, six or seven more levels? Big levels, too. And now those two armored slugs there, those are the guys that can spot Munch sometimes when the door is open and sneak attack him without your notice. Just just to give you a reference, I'll show you how close they are to where the lever Munch pull is. Yep, right here. And you could have no idea they're there, because the way the camera is when you're controlling Munch. You know, I mean... That's that's how I screwed up the first time, and it really pissed me off. So, yeah, thanks a lot for that. But, you know, with experience comes learning. Look at this guy, he's stuck between the fence. And you can, whichever way you move, you kind of phase out. Of course, we can't do anything with him, so sail of E. Or however you say that. Now, have you guessed what demo... Oh, well, I already set it up. This level was replicated in the official demo for the game. And if you have watched the bonus video that shows the demo, you'd see that there's a Splinters uh, building. There's just not a bunch of mines or a vending machine that's never in this game, which is the climb. So you know, in case you've noticed, probably didn't, because you're not a nerd like me. Thanks a lot, Shaman. You're a big help. You're actually here. You made it. I'm so glad you have such confidence in Abe. After he blew up like f eight factories at this point of his timeline. Don't go into a timeline debate about Oddworld. I know that won't happen because it's pretty straightforward, but I don't know it could ever happen. So that's No Mud's Land. I might have made it look a bit easy, but you know, rest assured. This is probably the hardest level in the game. And, uh, you know, next time we'll be in Splinters, the biggest toothpick factory around. Toothpicks? Really? They ran out of ideas. But then again, it is kind of clever. It's odd. <laughs> Alright, well, You know what else it is? It's really dark. See you guys later.